Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berend. Chapter 14. How to Make Nature Respond to You. It should be steadily borne in mind that there is an intelligence and power in all nature and all space that is always creative and infinitely sensitive and responsive. The responsiveness of its nature is twofold. It is creative and amenable to suggestion. Once the human understanding grasps this all-important fact, it realizes the simplicity of the law of life. All that is necessary is to realize that your mind is a center of divine operation, and consequently contains that within itself which accepts suggestions, and expect all life to respond to your call, and you will find suggestions which tend to the fulfillment of your desire coming to you, not only from your fellow men, but also from the flowers, the grass, the trees, and the rocks, which will enable you to fulfill your heart's desire if you act upon them in confidence on its physical plane. Faith without works is dead, but faith with works sets you absolutely free. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 Faith with Works – What it has accomplished It is said of Tyson, the great Australian millionaire, that the suggestion to make the desert land of Australia blossom as the rose came to him from a modest little Australian violet, while he was working as a bushman for something like three shillings a day. He used to find these friendly little violets growing in certain places in the woods, and something in the flower touched something akin to itself in the mind of Tyson. And he would sit on the side of his bunk at night and wonder how flowers and vegetable life could be given an opportunity to express itself in the desert land of Australia. No doubt he realised that it would take a long time to save enough money to put irrigating ditches in the desert lands, but his thought and feeling were sure it could be accomplished, and if it could be done, he could do it. If there was a power within himself that was able to capture the idea, then there must be a responsive power within the idea itself that could bring itself into a practical physical manifestation. He resolutely put aside all questions as to the specific ways and means which would be employed in bringing his desire into physical manifestation, and simply kept his thoughts centred upon the idea of making fences and seeing flowers and grass where none existed. Since the responsiveness of reproductive creative power is not limited to any local condition of mind, his habitual meditation and mental picture set his ideas free to roam in an infinitude, and attract to themselves other ideas of a kindred nature, Therefore, it was not necessary for Tyson to wait and see his ideas and desires fulfilled until he had saved from his three shillings a day enough money to irrigate the land, for his ideas found other ideas in a financial world which were attuned in sympathy with themselves, and doors of finance were quickly opened. All charitable institutions are maintained upon the principle of the responsiveness of life. If this were not true, no one would care to give, simply because another needed. The law of demand and supply, cause and effect, can never be broken. Ideas attract to themselves kindred ideas. Sometimes they come from a flower, a book, or out of the invisible. You are sitting or walking, intent upon an idea not quite complete as to the ways and means of fulfilment, and behold, along comes another idea, from no one can tell where, and finds friendly lodging with your idea one idea attracting another, and so on, until your desires are physical facts. You may feel the necessity for an improvement in your finances, and wonder how this increase can be brought about, when there seems to suddenly come from within the idea that everything had its birth in thought, even money, and your thoughts turn their course. You simply hold to the statement or affirmation that the best, and all there is, is yours, since you are able to capture ideas from the infinite through the instrument of your intuition, you let your mind rest upon that thought, knowing full well that this very thought will respond to itself. Your inhibition of the thought of doubt and feeling of anxiety enables the reassuring ideas to establish themselves and attract to themselves I can and I will ideas, which gradually grow into physical form of the desire in mind. In the conscious use of the universal power to reproduce your desires in physical form, three facts should be borne in mind. First, all space is filled with a creative power. Second, this creative power is amenable to suggestion. Third, it can only work by deductive methods. 
As Troward tells us, this last is an exceedingly important point, for it implies that the action of the ever-present creative power is in no way limited by precedent. It works according to the essence of the spirit of the principle. In other words, this universal power takes its creative direction from the word you give it. Once man realizes this great truth, it becomes the most important of all his consideration with what character this sensitive reproductive power is invested. It is the unvarying law of this creative life principle that, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you realize the truth that the only creative power can be to you only what you feel and think it to be, it is willing and able to meet your demands. Troward says, If you think your thought is powerful, then your thought is powerful. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, is the law of life, and the creative power can no more change this law than an ordinary mirror can reflect back to you a different image than the object you hold before it. As you think, so are you, does not mean, as you tell people you think, or, as you would wish the world to believe you think. It means your innermost thoughts, that place where no one but you knows. None can know the Father, save the Son, and no one can know the Son, but the Father. Only the reproductive creative spirit of life knows what you think until your thoughts become physical facts and manifest themselves in your body, your brain, or your affairs. Then everyone with whom you come in contact may know, because the Father, the intelligent creative energy which heareth in secret, hears your most secret thoughts, rewards you openly, reproduces your thoughts in physical form. As you think you know, that is what you become should be kept in the background of your mind constantly. This is watching and praying without ceasing. And when you are not feeling quite up to par physically, pray. End of chapter 15 Suggestions as to how to pray or ask, believing you have already received. Scientific thinking, positive thought. Suggestions for practical application. Try, through careful, positive, enthusiastic, though not strenuous, thought, to realize that the indescribable, invisible substance of life fills all space, that its nature is intelligent, plastic, subjective substance. Five o'clock in the morning is the best time to go into this sort of meditation. If you will retire early every night, for one month, before falling asleep, impress firmly upon your subjective mind the affirmation, My Father is the ruler of all the world, and is expressing his directing power through me you will find that the substance of life takes form in the moulds of your thoughts. Do not accept the above suggestion simply because it is given to you. Think it over carefully, until the impression is made upon your own subconscious mind understandingly. Rise every morning, as was suggested before, at five o'clock. Sit in a quiet room in a straight-backed chair, and think out the affirmation of the previous evening, and you will realize and be able to put into practice your princely power with the realization to some extent at least that your mind really is a center through which all the creative energy and power there is is taking form scientific prayer the principle underlying scientific prayer in prayer for a change in condition physical mental or financial for yourself or another Bear in mind that the fundamental necessity for the answer to prayer is the understanding of the scientific statement. Ask, believing you have already received, and you shall receive. This is not as difficult as it appears on the surface, once you realize that everything has its origin in the mind, and that which you seek outwardly, you already possess. No one can think a thought in the future. Your thought of a thing constitutes its origin. Therefore, the thought form of the thing is already yours as soon as you think it. Your steady recognition of this thought possession causes the thought to concentrate, to condense, to project itself, and to assume physical form. To get rich through creation. The recognition or conception of new forces of wealth is the loftiest aspiration you can take into your heart, for it assumes and implies a furtherance of all noble aims. Items to be remembered about prayer for yourself or another. Remember that that which you call treatment or prayer is not, in any sense, hypnotism. It should never be your endeavour to take possession of the mind of another. Remember that it should never be your intention to make yourself believe that which you know to be untrue. 
you are simply thinking into God or first cause, with the understanding that, if a thing is true at all, there is a way in which it is true throughout the universe. Remember that the power of thought works by absolutely scientific principles. These principles are expressed in the language of the statement, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This statement contains a world of wisdom, but man's steady recognition and careful application of the statement itself is required to bring it into practical use. Remember that the principles involved in being as we think in our heart are elucidated and revealed by the law, as you sow, you shall reap. Remember that your freedom to choose just what you will think, just what thought possession you will affirm and claim, constitutes God's gift to you. It shows how first cause has endowed every man with the power and ability to bring into his personal environment whatever he chooses, cause and effect in reference to getting. If you plant an acorn, you get an oak. If you sow a grain of corn, you reap a stalk and many kernels of corn. You always get the manifestation of that which you consciously or unconsciously affirm and claim, habitually declare and expect, or in other words, as you sow. Therefore, sow the seeds of I am, I ought, I can, I will realize that because you are, you ought, that because you ought, you can, that because you can, you do. The manifestation of this truth, even in a small degree, gives you the indisputable understanding that dominion is your charter right. You are an heir of first cause, endowed with all the power he has. God has given you everything, all is yours, and you know that all you have to do is to reach out your mental hand and take it. This formula may serve as a pattern to shape your own prayer or affirmation into God for the benefit of another or yourself. If, for another, you speak the Christian name of the person you wish to help, then dismiss their personality entirely from your consciousness. Intensify your thought by meditating upon the fact that there is that in you which finds the way, which is the truth, and is the life. You are affirming this fact, believing that since you are thinking this, it is already yours. Having lifted up your feelings to the central idea of this meditation, you examine your own consciousness to see if there is aught which is unlike God. If there is any feeling of worry, fear, malice, envy, hatred or jealousy, turn back in your meditation to cleanse your thought through the affirmation that God's love and purity fill all space, including your heart and soul. Reconcile your thought with the love of God, always remembering that you are made in the image and likeness of love. Keep this cleansing thought in mind until you feel you have freed your consciousness entirely of all thoughts and feelings other than love and unity with all humanity. Then if denials do not disturb you, deny all that is unlike your desired manifestation. This accomplished, you almost overlay your denial with the affirmative thought that you are made in the image and likeness of God and that you already have your desire fulfilled in its first, its original spiritual or thought form. Closing of Prayer Prayer as a method of thought is a deliberate use of the law which gives you the power of dominion over everything which tends in any way to hamper your perfect liberty. You have been given life that you may enjoy it more and more fully. The steady recognition of this truth makes you declare yourself a prince of power. You recognize, accept and use this power as a child of a king and hence dominion is your birthright. Then when you feel the light of this great truth flooding your consciousness, Open the floodgates of your soul in heartfelt praise that you have the understanding that the Creator and His creation are one. Also that the Creator is continually creating through His creation. Close your treatment in the happy assurance that the prayer which is fulfilled is not a form of supplication, but a steady habitual affirming that the Creator of all creation is operating specifically through you. Therefore, the work must be perfectly done. Your mind is a center of divine operation. Hints for application and practice. For every five minutes given to reading and study of the theories of mental science, spend 15 minutes in the use and application of the knowledge acquired. 1. Spend one minute in every 24 hours in conscientiously thinking over the specification that must be observed in order to have your prayers answered. 2. Practice the steady recognition of desirable thought possession for two periods of 15 minutes each every day. Not only time yourself each period to see how long you can keep a given conception before your mental vision, 
but also keep a written record of the vividness with which you experience your mental image. Remember that your mental senses are just as varied and trainable as your physical ones. 3. Spend five minutes every day between twelve noon and one o'clock with a mental search for new sources of wealth. End of chapter 16 Chapter 17. Things to Remember Remember that the greatest mental scientist the world has ever known, Jesus Christ, the man, said that all things are possible unto you. Also, the things I do, you can do. Did he tell the truth? Jesus did not claim to be more divine than you are. He declared the whole human race children of God. By birth he was no exception to this rule. The power he possessed was developed through his personal effort. He said you could do the same if you would only believe in yourself. A great idea is valueless unless accompanied by physical action. God gives the idea, man works it out on the physical plane. All that is really worthwhile is contentment. Self-command alone can produce it. The soul and body are one. Contentment of mind is contentment of soul, and contentment of soul means contentment of body. If you wish health, watch your thoughts, not only of your physical being, but your thoughts about everything and everybody. With your will, keep them in line with your desire, and outwardly act in accordance with your thoughts, and you will soon realize that all power, both over thoughts and conditions, has been given to you. You believe in God. Believe in yourself as the physical instrument through which God operates. Absolute dominion is yours when you have sufficient self-mastery to conquer the negative tendency of thoughts and actions. Ask yourself daily, what is the purpose of the power which put me here? How can I work with the purpose for life and liberty in me? Upon having decided these questions, endeavour hourly to fulfil them. You are a law unto yourself. If you have a tendency to overdo anything, eat, drink, or blame circumstances for your misfortune, conquer that tendency with the inward conviction that all power is yours outwardly. Eat less, drink less, blame circumstances less, and the best there is will gradually grow into the place where the worst seem to be. Always remember that all is yours to use as you will. You can if you will. If you will, you do. God the Father blesses you with all he has to give. Make good godly use of it. The reason for greater success when you first began your studies and demonstrations in mental science is that your joy and enthusiasm at the simple discovery of the power within was greater than you have been able to put into your understanding later. With increased understanding, put increasing joy and enthusiasm, and the results will correspond. End of chapter 17 End of Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berend Read by Algie Pug